you wrong. Well, thank you for for joining the the Podcast Academy uh, webinar on you know doing some introductions as well as you know taking your your questions. This is the the, the second part of what we just did earlier today. Um, and so hopefully we have a whole other set of people that are, that are going to come in and, and watch us this time. But my name is Rob Greenlee and I'm the, the chairman or the chairperson properly said of the podcast Academy. And also I'm the vice president of content and partnerships for the podcast hosting platform Lipson. I've been a podcaster for 16 years now myself and have been working professionally, um, in the podcasting space for, for a long time, and then also hosting many, many uh, shows and radio shows for, for many, many years. So um, this is an honor for me to, to take on this role um, and to be involved in the formation of this. This is really, I think, a, a first in the podcasting space is this type of an organization that's focused on really primarily the content side of the, of the production and excellence of uh, podcasting. And so, so let's, let's go ahead and, and kind of kick it around the, the table here. Um, off to my left, I guess, would be Michelle Cobb, who's the executive director of the Podcast Academy. And then right below me in the bottom square is Joanna Alaskas, who's the, what's your official title or do you have one? Um, account manager. Account um, manager of the, of the Podcast Academy. And now these these two um, fine ladies are um, part-time um, staff members of the academy, and they are filling a amazing um, role in the formation of this organization to keep us all together. I mean, the board of governors are, as you might imagine, are a fairly busy group of of people um, in their perspective companies and what they do. So you know, we convene on a regular basis to share ideas and and come up with a direction that uh, then um, Michelle and Joanna kind of pursue. And I think there's a fair amount of decisions that these two ladies make um, that are fantastic decisions that they make kind of on their own in the, in the academy as well. But we wanted to get, get together and just open up the discussion, right? Because in a few days, we're going to be taking membership. Um, on June 22nd. And so we're excited to kick this off and we definitely want to want to hear your thoughts and share your ideas and, and just barrage us with questions because we've already done it once. So I think we can do it twice, right, Michelle? <laughs> Absolutely. You've got a Q&A box in the bottom of your Zoom screen there. We would love for you to put your questions there. And uh, the chat box just goes by really quick. So if you want to say hello or introduce yourself um, to the other attendees, you are welcome to. All right. Well, I'm going to kick it off with a question oh, for Rob. Who gets to be a member of the Podcast Academy? Well, basically, if you're actively involved in the podcast um, community, business, uh, creating content, uh, you know, working, working kind of behind the scenes in the productions of podcasts, uh, you know, you can join. It's just a matter of getting a couple of recommendation letters and some, you know, some, some proof and some evidence that you are involved in, in the podcasting space. So I think, you know, it's fairly straightforward. I have been getting a lot of questions about uh, recommendation letters uh, since our first uh, the webinar earlier today, I'm getting people sending me emails with their qualifications and um, I'm supposed to drop that into a recommendation uh, letter back to them. So it seems to be starting to, to happen. And we did put out a kind of like a template um, of a recommendation letter that can just be used and you just drop your information into this. Um, and, you know, this, it's basically, a, it's basically a Google doc and you just you know, in the community, you guys can share this document around and, and fill it out and get, you know, a PDF sent back to you or something like that. And then that could be used to submit uh, as part of your membership application. So as a member, is it an individual membership or a company membership? It's all, all an individual uh, membership. Uh, there are no company memberships in the organization. So what about the companies like Libsyn and Wondery and Sony and all these great companies who are helping us get started? What's their role? Well, their, their role is to really 
provide some leadership um, on the founding board and to come up with ideas that will be uh, best for the, the broader industry and also pr to provide some seed funding to get the organization off the ground um, to pay find folks like uh, Joanna and, and Michelle to, to dedicate you know like maybe half of their time on working on the podcast academy and pulling all of the administrative things together um, and that's that's where you know, there's websites, there's activities, there's, uh, you know, uh, social platforms that we need to engage with to, to develop, you know, mentorship programs and all sorts of kind of, kind of things that come up, as you might imagine, when you're really, you know, you're kind of starting a company, but this is a nonprofit. So everything gets funneled back into um, benefiting the members. And what are some of the member benefits? That's the first question that came up. Wow. Well, I I say that the number one um, focus of the organization, well, actually, there, there's two main focuses, and that's education, uh, sharing of uh, ideas, doing webinars, getting involved in, in uh, if at some point we have conferences where we can have events that are kind of aligned with other events, and then the, the actual awards um, to, to reward excellence in uh, podcasting, which is the kind of the primary focus of if you want to use an analogy for this organization it would be more like the the grammys or the academy awards or the oscars um those would be the proper analogies i i, I know in the first hour that we did this earlier today i i brought up the nab as a possible model for this too but i would say that's probably a little off the mark um at, at this stage in the organization's development but it certainly has the potential of heading down some of those paths as, as well and so we have a question about the awards. Can you talk a little bit about what we're hoping to recognize us through those awards, which don't have a name yet? <laughs> yeah, well, and we're actually um, working on that right now, trying, trying to come up with a name. Uh, the, the board is contributing actively, right? I mean, even today, um, ideas for what that awards might be. Um, so, and, and we'll come up with something, it'll be something fun and, and so something that the industry can really, really rally around. But the, but the focus of the awards is really to, um, to reward excellence in all aspects of podcasting, whether it's um, hosting a podcast or producing a podcast, editing a podcast, um, all, all levels of excellence in the podcasting space. Uh, you can be an indie producer, you can be a, be a professional that's working on post-production and we'll find a way to, to reward those communities and make those peer groups, um, you know, be in contact with each other to foster this uh, sharing of skills and, and, and abilities that can help elevate the whole medium. What's fun is being here at the beginning of an organization, we're really having an opportunity to work with people to develop those things. So just because we have one set of awards the first year doesn't mean those will be exactly the same the second year. And as we get members, people mm -hmm. contributing, volunteering, participating, giving their feedback, that's going to help figure out uh, what we do and how we do it. Well, yeah, no, after the, the terms of the foundation or the founding um, board members has expired, we're going to have elections and the membership will be able to elect a new board of governors that will hopefully be reflective of what the, the broader podcast community would want on the board versus what we had to do is we just selected some folks that were willing to support the foundation or the formation of this organization. And that's that's who's kind of in, in charge of it right now. But it's not to say that we're not open to hearing from you and whether it be criticism or ideas, the whole spectrum, because that's kind of our, our, our job here is to, is, is to be of service to, to the community. Yeah, and we invite you, Joanna will put my email in the box. If you want to volunteer after you've joined as a member, mm -hmm. just send me what you're interested in doing. White papers, webinars, helping with the awards. There's plenty to do. And Joanna and I, mm -hmm. are, you know, we have, we have a lot of help needed. So uh, we're ready to listen. Yeah. Now we've got a bunch of questions about membership. So first of all, what does it cost to be a member? Uh, for the first uh, few months here, it's going to be $50. Uh, and I believe 
that's for all all levels of membership, um, whether you're a student or a professional in the space. Correct. Uh, and I think at the end of was it the end of September, it's going to go up to a hundred dollars. I think is yep. what what. What, what it was so that's so correct in now when it's you know, it's a 50 percent off sale <laughs> exactly exactly and um there are two groups that people can you know choose they choose either in front of the mic or behind the mic and right. so why do we make that distinction and what if someone does both well i think I mean, if you do both, let, let me start with that. And a lot of indie podcasters do both. They do basically everything, even sweep the floors. But um, it's, it's really a matter of you selecting what you consider yourself to have as your, your best uh, skill, right? It, is it hosting a podcast or is it doing editing? Is it whatever it is, um, that would be what you select that. So I would create like a rank of what you think your strongest skills are. That doesn't exclude you from being able to participate in all of the skill developments in, in the educational side of the, of the academy. So it's not going to lock you out, but what it will do is it will put you into peer groups that will be utilized uh, when it comes time to voting for um, the, the awards. So, so you want to pick a area where you feel like you have the strongest expertise in. And you need two recommendations to become a member. Right. Who can actually give those recommendations? Well, well, to get started with, it's going to be a, a, a peer in the podcasting space that people would, would recognize or is actively producing a podcast as well. But ultimately, what you're going to want to have, if you join a little bit later, will be a, a current member of the, of the academy will be that person that would need to write you a recommendation letter. But I think at the beginning for the first few months, I think, and Michelle, we're going to accept other professionals in the, in the medium. And hopefully those other professionals that are writing recommendations letters will come in and join too. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's right. what we would hope to have. And right. poor Rob is getting bombarded with those yes, I am. Uh, requests I'm, right now. <laughs> actually, I've already filled out one recommendation letter just, just since we did the first webinar. And I've had like four or five come in after that. But don't send them all to me just because I, <laughs> I need to work too. <laughs> and for anybody who might want to write a recommendation, there is a template on the website. Just a reminder, right. you can go to the podcastacademy.com and find out all of these materials. There's a checklist for what you need to submit when, you, right. uh, when we open membership on Monday. So Joanna and I are anticipating, you know, going through all the different um, applications and taking it through a whole process. Uh, Joanna, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about that process. Absolutely. Um, so uh, the application process uh, begins when you apply for membership and you upload your various proofs of credentials, depending on where you fall in the industry. Um, you are then, um, your full application is then reviewed by Michelle and by me. And then we bring that to uh, the membership committee on a rolling weekly basis. So we will either approve your application in a week or less time, um, or come back to you with more questions um, in that time. And once you're approved by the membership committee, uh, you will be a provisional member of the Academy, which gives you full rights and full access to everything that we do and all the benefits of membership uh, that we hope to uh, that we currently offer and hope to offer in the future. Um, and then the Board of Governors meets on a quarterly basis. And at that time, they will review all of the provisional members and grant them full membership status. Um, and the reason for that is that we do need to give the Board of Governors an opportunity to fully approve members. And we want to get members um, up and running on more than a quarterly basis. So that's why we have the provisional membership. Uh, to get you started. Yeah. And um, Rob, this, a couple of questions have come in about, do you have to live in the U.S. to uh, be a member? No, this is, oh, actually the board a few months ago made the decision that uh, we were going to make this a, a, a global, you know, academy and organization. So we are taking memberships from outside of the U.S. and we actually encourage that. We want to build a global, um, you know, 
academy here. And, and as far as the strategy for expansion, I mean, actually taking the academy and kind of integrating more with other countries around the world, I, I think that's, that's a strategy that we're still formulating exactly how to do that, whether or not there's chapters in various countries around the world or um, how that, you know, in different, you know, physical world events maybe um, can, can happen in various countries that are kind of endorsed by the organization. We're not exactly sure how that's all going to come together. And, but I have had inquiries um, from people from outside of the U.S. with wanting to do something like that. So, so we'll, we'll see. The Board of Governors will, will talk about it here, here in the next meeting and uh, see how we might want to proceed on that. Oh, here's a great question. This is a new question. We didn't get this in the last one. So can you change your peer group if you change the focus of your career? I would think so. It's easy peasy. Honestly, right. all you have to do is uh, let us know in the main office and we can change that for you. And the mm -hmm. thing is, really, there's no difference in access at all. It's just how right. you're self-identifying. So. Right. Ooh, this is, this is an interesting question. What would lead the board to disprove a membership? Hmm. I don't disapprove. anticipate that, that, that happening very often, but it sounded like Joanna had a thought on that one. I do, um, you know, because this actually had come up in a conversation with another um, board member the other day, and we do have a member code of conduct um, that, you know, is broad and just um, really outlines what we expect of our members in terms of um, how they interact with one another, and um, uh, that is that will be posted on our website uh, later this afternoon. Um, it's been on my list for a couple of days, which is why we're chuckling about that. Um, but yeah, so um, other than that, you know, there's not going to be, in my opinion, many cases that would um, cause someone to not be approved for. Membership. Unless, of course, yeah. they don't meet the qualifications. So they haven't been podcasting for right. the amount of time or, you know, if they're a dentist and they just started their, their personal dentist dental podcast, you know, a month ago, you don't quite meet the qualifications yet. So your membership would not be approved. Um, right. But, you know, 23 months later, you could be. <laughs> Right, and I believe that, and you know, if you look at the, the website, there, there, there's some somewhat new categories of people that can participate, um, wh whether it be, you know, kind of folks that are working on the technical side, you know, in their organization, as well as maybe um, journalists that are involved in, in uh, covering the podcasting medium, uh, those folks being able to join as well. Yeah, technical hosting, whatever you do. And right. uh, we actually have one of the, within the peer groups, there's places where you can self-identify your areas of interest. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of podcasters do it all. And so you'll see the words multi-health hyphenate in there. That's for right. you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about um, how you anticipate volunteers and people getting involved? Well, I think uh, as we look forward to the future, I think that there's going to be opportunities uh, around the educational side of things where various experts from various parts of the industry can put together webinars and and trainings and things like that, that we can, we can be a, um, you know, a, a funnel of to, to the broader community. And the other part too is, is mentorship. We're working on a, on an initiative within the organization to match people up with um, folks that are wanting to develop their skills or just to have a person to bounce things off of. I know this is a very common practice in companies all over the world where you get a mentor that helps you with your career or whatever, but it could be a real similar type of a thing for in the podcasting area. So, and this is where it gets into the peer groups um, really strongly of uh, aligning those communities with each other that can help each other and to elevate the medium, share knowledge and share um, skills um, that, can, that can further um, improve the podcasting space. And I, I just answered this in the, in the Q&A box, but someone asked, is that $50? Is that for a year? Yes. <laughs> year of membership. Yep. And, we're and I working believe it's a rolling, it, it's a rolling membership too. Correct. Right? Yeah. Right. So if you join on June 22nd, we will start bugging you again next June uh, to right. re-up your membership. Right. 
All right, keep those questions coming in the chat box. That's right. It's a quiet, quiet group here. You also will have to do just a regular podcast, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question um, that was something that came up um, in our last um, in our last session uh, that I think would be interesting for mm -hmm. everyone to hear about, and it has to do with the diversity of the Board of Governors and mm -hmm. Uh, the diversity of our membership and what um, what is the emphasis that the board is placing on that and how um, how did we create the founding board of governors? Yeah, well, I mean, Michelle, if you want to start off because you were involved at the very beginning of it, I I was not, but I can I can certainly after you've given sure. us the history a little bit, then I can add a little um, flavor to it. Well, it, it was an interesting story where Joanna and I were, um, we work on other membership associations and we were working on one in the audiobook space and we're seeing everything that was happening with podcasting and we thought, ooh, we should really see if they, the people in the podcast world want to do that. So we started talking to some people and it was a long process, but then you know, when you get the right people involved, suddenly, almost overnight, it was like, woof, we were on uh, high speed there. So we started working with Christy Mirabel from Sony and uh, Hernan Lopez from Wondery and said, okay, what would we like this organization to be? And then how would we like the board to be made up? And both Christy and Hernan were very clear that they wanted to have diversity on the board ethnic diversity, you know, uh, gender diversity, and location diversity. So we have, for instance, a member who is in the UK on the board, and we have people who live in Atlanta and people on the West Coast and East Coast. Mm -hmm. And really, that was a key method of how some of the board was chosen. Everyone is super well qualified and has lots to bring to the table. And we certainly, you know, we could have made up a board of 100 people. It's just hard to... Uh, get all those people to make a decision together. <laughs> yeah, and the board is is comprised of um, those on the listening side, you know, with Apple and and Spotify on the on, on the board already and and then also on the content creation side whether, whether it be indie producers, whether you know myself with this podcast hosting platform, there's a there's there is a lot of a lot of a lot of diversity on the board as far as covering the the broader medium. All right, so we've got some questions. We keep having these membership questions. So mm -hmm. after the first year, if it's $50, if you join between now and October, then next June, what will the cost be? It'll be $100 a year yep. at that point. Exactly. So that's our standard cost. It's, you right. know, we try to keep it low uh, and then we look for other ways to fund the organization. So someone's just asked, are we still looking for sponsors? Well, we, we aren't taking sponsors uh, at this point. Sponsors will be something that, that we'll do around kind of our, our events that we will be putting on in the future. Um, as far as initial startup funding, um, the organization is, was, is being funded by the Board of Governors right now, uh, just at, in the startup phase, just to get it off the ground to support, you know, Joanna and Michelle here and spending half time working on, you know, getting the organization put together, the initiatives, moving, fostering meetings. Um, and so that's, that's where, so each of the board members is, it is contributing money into the pot, um, but it is not a sponsorship. It is just an infusion of capital to get the organization launched. And there are different ways in which board members are doing right. that through right. um, different initiatives. It's, it's not all just cash funding. Right. Uh, so someone was asking how companies can apply to be on the board of governors. However, a companies company, can't can't yeah. be a member of the organization, so that's not possible. Right. Everyone's an individual. Okay, so a couple more questions. Um, will the group do any advocacy for the podcast industry? It's very. It's very likely that could happen at some point. I don't see it happening anytime real soon. Um, I, I think we're in too much of a, a community building phase to really get too much involved in advocacy. I think the organization needs to be at scale, but it's not really the, the core purpose of the organization anyway. I mean, if, it depends on what kind of advocacy you're talking about. If we're advocating for excellence in, in content and, and podcasting, and yeah, I could say that we are, but if you're talking about some sort of political you know, aspect of this, we're, we're not involved in that. 
And we certainly, in looking at the awards, are looking for that to help us build recognition of the podcast space in that way. Right. All right, someone's asking, what kind of topics will be covered in the educational webinars and who will lead them? All sorts of different people from the, the membership community. I believe that we're, we're, we're going to get some, some members that come into this organization that are going to be very, very good at doing webinars, trainings. Um, you know, that's one thing the podcasting space has done a really terrific job of is fostering experts that are willing to uh, talk on a microphone. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. And we... <laughs> yeah. So they, there's a, a, a wealth of uh, resources on the educational side. And many of those folks are more than happy to get behind a microphone or a webcam and, and um, share their knowledge and expertise. It's something I've been doing for, for years myself. Yeah, and we unfortunately had to postpone our first planned right. webinar, which was in the technical space, but we we're also talking to people about doing things, uh, topics such as true crime, uh, mm -hmm. diversity, all sorts of things. So as you become a member, if you have an idea, again, my email is in the chat box, so uh, I'm right. taking ideas. Uh, what are our expectations for the first year of the Academy? Membership, timeline, all that. I expect, you know, a, a steady flow of new members coming into the organization. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, it's one of those things that it could be a, um, a flood. Um, I think there is a pent up demand for this type of an organization in the podcasting community. Uh, it's, it's really, it's hard to say how fast that's going to happen. Um, but I'm, I'm very, very excited that, that it will happen and that we can, bring some unity to the podcasting medium that's long overdue. Um, so I'm excited about it. And I think in the, you know, within the first year or so, I think this could become a fairly large organization. I mean, there's, there's examples of this um, happening with the podcast movement uh, Facebook group. I believe they're at like 38,000 members uh, and the she podcasting platform, I, I believe is like 12 to 13,000 members. So uh, I, I think at least we could be in that range um, within the first year to two years. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. So uh, someone's asking, what is it, will it be possible for a new podcaster to find a podcast academy member who will be their mentor so they can eventually acquire membership? It's a complicated question. <laughs> yeah, how? Um, yeah, I believe we're gonna have a search box on the website for, 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 for Academy members. I, I believe, I don't know if that's going to be a public search though, is it? No. So I think you, the, you the question is more about, so if you're not a member and right. you would like a podcast Academy mem mentorship. Oh yeah. Right. To okay. Sort of mentorship. lead you to become a, a mentor or to uh, become a member. It's, it's actually not something yeah. that we've discussed. Yeah, we've, it isn't something that, that's why I was a little lost on the question. I wasn't exactly sure. <laughs> we are planning a formal mentorship program um, for- But that's member to member. member, yeah. But this, you know, it, you bring up a great question and one that the Board of Governors will certainly mm -hmm. discuss because it's a great point. Great point. Right. So thank you. Well, because we do want to foster new podcasters in, in, in the space as well, not just ones that are existing podcasters. I mean, somehow, you know, if we can develop some sort of a, and I think if we do some public events, I think that will happen, right? And, and there's also student membership too. So there's going to be um, students that can come in and get, get involved in the organization as well early on in their careers, right? Yeah, that's, that's an exciting uh, aspect of academies is uh, you can lead yourself to a full membership by participating as a, a beginner, as a student, which is fantastic. Right. All right, other questions out there? Let's see here. Oh, here's one. Oh, how long have we been preparing this initiative? <laughs> Well, technically, Joanna and I, uh, we were just talking about this. We have been working on this for two years now, um, but we really started in earnest uh, with this group uh, and a cohesive sense of where we were moving in December. So uh, it's pretty new. Right. It is. You know, I didn't get involved in the organization, I believe, until like March. So yep. it's it, that was the first first meeting that I attended. 
Um, in, and that was really the first, you know, right. big group meeting actually was, right. Uh, was March, right, right before we all went into our houses. <laughs> right, before we all isolated ourselves, yes, yeah. and, and, and got on Zoom meetings all day long, right? Yes. <laughs> I feel lucky that uh, there we all were in New York and none of us got sick. So from right. that meeting, anyway, people did get sick, but not from that meeting. <laughs> and, and nobody wore a face mask at that meeting either at that point. <laughs> that was just before the whole world changed. Right. Or, Lapsed, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. So. All right. Someone's asking, so for $100 a year, experienced podcasters can get access to educational cor courses and can be nominated for an awards show but that doesn't require a membership. Are there other big, advantage to becoming a, big advantages to becoming a member? So I'll start us off there. So first okay. of all, we're starting with open webinars like this, but eventually these educational uh, events and the social events, things like you know, Zoom webinars or someday in-person cocktail parties, those will be limited to members. And although non-members can certainly nominate themselves for an award, uh, their submission fee will cost more. So for your $100 membership, if you're going to uh, submit for the awards, you're, that's a big advantage actually to, to come into that. Mm -hmm. Also the, the mentorship program uh, that's you know, within members. So if you want to be a mentee or a mentor, uh, that will require membership. And we'll be you know, developing these things over time based on what our members tell us that they want. Right, and I believe we'll also have some tie-ins with some existing conferences that we're gonna be doing activities at um, at some point. Th those haven't been disclosed or, or really even pursued tremendously yet, but I, I know that there's some interest from a lot of the big uh, podcasting conferences to work with the Academy and to, to do some things. So there may be some things that will be available to Academy members at those events. All right. And we've got a lot of questions about how much the award submissions will be and what will the difference in fee be. We are still discussing those things. Uh, we haven't settled on an exact fee and what exactly how much you'll save as a, a member, but in, in the course of our discussions, we wanted to keep both the membership and the award submissions fairly manageable for anyone so that we mm -hmm. can get a wide variety of submissions, but there will be a, a substantial um, reward for being a member when it comes to the, the submission, but we don't have an exact answer yet. Well, and as, as the organization grows and the membership grows, the, the more benefits will, will be worked on in the organization. And, and so this is just at the very beginning. And that's why your, your input is so important uh, to help us shape this and to figure out where, where those value points are that maybe we haven't thought of yet, but we're, we're racking our brains trying to think of all sorts of benefits that we can drive to our, our community. All right, Joanna, if there's a question for us. I see that. Uh, what, what are some learnings from your early experiences that we're looking to bring to the Podcast Academy? Um, so, you know, one of the great things is that uh, Michelle and I have been working together um, off and on and more on than off for uh, the better part of 15 years now. Um, and in the capacity of organizational management and not-for-profit management, program development, um, awards management and development. Uh, so we hope to bring our, you know, decade and a half plus of uh, learnings that we have um, and best practices that we've developed together, that's what we want to bring to the Podcast Academy. You know, a lot of what we're doing as an organization from the nuts and bolts side is not new. Um, so we can, uh, what, what we can bring is the experience to seamlessly kick those initiatives off, which will really allow the Board of Governors and Michelle to focus more on uh, strategic and growth initiatives for the organization that can benefit the members. Um, and I would say one of the things that we have enjoyed the most and been pretty successful at is creating a sense of community uh, in the audiobook space. You know, it's not a huge group and we've been able to really get people involved and to get to know the members of that organization, which are different. It's not all individuals. Some of them are companies, so it's a bit different. Um, but 
we've had a, a really good time fostering those interactions and that communication for an industry. And, and we're excited to try it with uh, an industry that's fairly new to both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a 16 year old industry. <laughs> yeah. New, <laughs> new industry. Right. right. That's right. This is just the, the, the first time I know on the, the audiobook side, I'm, I, I'm sure there's a organization that's been around a very long time. I don't know. I mean, how long has that organization been around and when did 1986. it start? 1986. 1986. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. A, a bit, a bit longer. <laughs> yeah. I know. Is it a larger or smaller um, community than what's potential here? It's, it's a much smaller community than, than okay. what is potential here. So there's, um, you know, probably only a couple hundred uh, publishers of audiobooks, mm -hmm. and that's what the organization is focused on. Uh, there is a lot of different associate memberships for the audio publishers so that if you're a voice talent, you can be a member. Uh, and that's a much more traditional um, association for companies that is focused on things like research uh, that really push the, the publishers forward and everyone else is kind of, you know, participating in the events. So it's, it's a different structure, but it's a really fun community as well. And right. what I've certainly seen in audiobooks and in podcasting is everyone's super nice. Why, why would I go be a banker when I could do this? <laughs> yeah, well, they're all love to communicate, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> uh, so Rick, you are close. We have a question. It's a, uh, but not really a question. It's audiobook publishers association. You're very close. It's the audio publishers association is what we're referring to what Michelle's talking about. Yes, because we do have members that do plays or poems or original works. Uh, the big difference that we always see and get questions about what's the difference between audiobooks and podcasting and why are the awards not the same. Uh, it's the business model really audiobooks is a sales mm -hmm. model. And, uh, you know, podcasting works on, on different models of monetization. Right. But there are audiobooks that are podcasts. So, and I mean, vice versa. There, yeah. <laughs> there is some crossover there. Right. Yeah. Yes. For that award show, we actually have to say, like, if it's not sold, it's not eligible to, right. Uh, right. to win an Audi. So yeah. that's the distinction there. Right. <laughs> Interesting. And one of the fun things that we've been through, Joanna and I have been through together, is when you're working with a group for a while, you need change. So you can't always do the awards in the same way. You have to try something new to raise the profile to, mm -hmm. you know, make it intriguing to go to. So we've been through a number of different ways of, of doing awards. And we're super excited for this award because it's members voting on it. So that's a whole new uh, a piece of intrigue for us. So one thing we should probably talk about is, is, as we look at the organization around different kind of initiatives, is there going to be committees? Uh, I know the organization has a certain amount of committees right now, you know, on the executive committee membership. Are there any others that are in, in the plans um, that we can share with the community? Well, those will be, basically, we, we've got membership, we've got awards, we've got governance, and we've got executives. Mm -hmm. So the, the membership committee will definitely have a subset mm -hmm. of committees. So mm -hmm. things like education, white papers, uh, and that'll, again, develop through what our members are telling us they want and what they want to participate in. So uh, we look forward to having some more committees and, and some more people uh, helping. <laughs> so those those future future committees could be um, populated by members, right? I'm assuming. Absolutely, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's another opportunity, right? For those that want to have an influence on the shaping of the organization would be getting involved in these, um, these sub, sub groups talking about specific areas of the, of the academy, right? Exactly. And I've, I've started a Google Doc already with all the people mm -hmm. that sent in this morning what they were, you know, interested in volunteering with. So when I say, okay, uh, we want to do a webinar and we have a blank spot in two months, hey, let's go to these people that said they were interested in webinars. Eventually, that can become a committee right. that has a leader and they will do a lot of the planning and will be more supportive. And that could that kind of structure could go in a lot of different directions as the needs of the industry evolve. That could go into technical directions. It could go into best practices. It could go into a lot of different, you know, the listening platforms. 
can go a lot of, I mean, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that's what we're doing right now, but it, it could go in a lot of different directions. That could Absolutely. be helpful to the industry. Yes. Yeah. So any other questions you got coming through? I think we've answered everybody's questions. I can't believe wow. it. Wow, we're getting good at this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess we are getting close to the end. I, I don't think we went much longer on the on the first one we did. So. No, so if, if there are no more questions, we'll, we'll give it a moment. We did um, record this and we will be putting links to both webinars up on the site. Uh, oh. Oh, Rick says, thank you to all of you. This was super. That's super nice, Rick. See, I, I yeah. already feel the love from the podcast yes. community. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you know of someone who is interested, uh, you can go to our website. You can sign up for our mailing list and be alerted Monday when things become totally live. You mm -hmm. can send them to see a link to one of these webinars and you get to see inside of our houses. <laughs> right. We've, Oh, here's another question. Let's see. Uh, can people volunteer even if they are not members? Not at this time. We're going to start with our members being volunteers. There may become mm -hmm. opportunities as we do events, uh, if someone's right. not a member to become involved. Um, but we got to walk, we got to crawl before we can walk. So uh, we're on step one, phase one here. Yeah, and if you want to go to the website, the podcastacademy.com, I, I believe you go to the, the membership tab and drop down, there's a couple of documents that are up there that you can kind of read ahead and, and uh, read about what the criteria are for submitting. So you make sure that you have like your two letters of recommendation ready to go. Um, you know, there's a template there like we were talking about earlier see if you can send that around to some of your professional friends and see if they can they can populate that to verify your involvement in the podcasting medium and have those ready to go so and i believe there's also like a checklist that's there, in there is too, a checklist right? yeah so yep. you can go through and and make sure that you've got all the information that you need so when you can go in and join you'll have all that stuff ready to go it's going to be a very exciting monday i can tell you that <laughs> yes you guys are going to be busy we are <laughs> Well, I will too, I'm sure. Yes, I'm right. sure. You're, you're yeah, going to have to right. write a, a hundred yeah, thousand lots, of these. <laughs> lots of recommendation letters. I've already written one already. So, all right. Um, I think I think we've covered it all, unless anybody else has any other questions. Uh, oh, congratulations and kudos to the board to, for selecting Rob as the chair. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored to, to take this role on. Ho hopefully I can make an impact, so. Great. Well, we appreciate you all showing up and please spread the word. If you have any questions, please send them in. Joanna has been putting the um, website, the Twitter handle, my email, Rob's email in the chat. So uh, we're not hiding. Nope. All right. Have a fantastic weekend. We're going to stop recording now and just vamp a little while people exit the building, as it were. That's right.